Welcome to the Gigaspace's large-scale logistics demo. Here's a quick look at what we're going to show you today. We'll demonstrate a package management application and show how data is loaded into the cluster, how it tracks package movement, how package delivery is calculated and recalculated in case of delay, and how the application scales to maintain high performance. We'll also demonstrate the rich dashboard with real-time analytics on package status information. Here's a quick look at the system architecture. At the center, you can see a Gigaspaces in-memory data and processing grid. A package enters the application with the status departure scan and goes through the various route legs to reach delivered status. The loader, as the name suggests, is used to load package and route leg data into the system. The simulator simulates package movement by moving along the route leg from origin to destination by changing the status and also randomly simulates delays. The route leg monitor monitors the route legs and updates the package status and the analytics. It also has the business logic to recalculate the expected delivery dates for packages in a delayed route leg. The package monitor receives proactive notifications on any delayed events in the system. Finally, the dashboard UI is a client that runs analytics queries in the grid. This is the logistics demo of a real-time package management application running on EC2, where we have 12 Linux machines and another Windows machine for the management UI. What you're seeing is the web UI pointing to the cluster. The app is not yet deployed, so you don't see anything in the application stack. I'll deploy the app now. It can take a moment. As it deploys, let's walk through the client UI. This is a rich client UI running out of the Windows box. You'll notice that the logistics demo app appears in the UI. In just a moment, you'll see the actual space partitions as well. So here you can see that all 24 out of the 24 partitions have been deployed. It successfully finished deploying. Here, in the web UI, you can see the services, partitions, and the logs for each of the partitions. Here you can see the CPU utilization of each node. And right now, there are no objects in the space, so the number of objects is zero. Each of these boxes represents a machine on the EC2 cluster. You saw 12 boxes earlier, and each machine has two grid service containers, or GSCs for short. So there are 24 partitions in all across 12 machines. Each of the GSCs uses a 30 gig heap size. Right now, the space browser shows no objects because I have yet to load the mission data. So there are route legs and packages and package statistics. Let's clear the screen. I'm just about to run the initial load. Using a distributed task, the loader populates the cluster with close to 200 million objects. Out of this, 192 million are packages, and about 2.4 million are route legs. There are multiple packages within a route leg. A route leg represents a movement of a package from origin to destination. So you can see the statistics pane. The blue bar shows the number of updates. The green bar shows the number of writes, and the red one, the number of reads. So you can see that the load goes all the way up to over a million objects. And in the Space Browser tab, you can see that there are over 76 million objects already loaded, and they are still loading. Now, we've reached the 100 million mark. OK, so the load is done. 192 million objects and 2.4 million route legs have been loaded. The average rate was 380,000 transactions per second across the cluster. So as you can see, the memory utilization rate is close to 74% now, with the CPU all around 35, and the data is spread evenly across the partitions. These are the statistics of the data load, so updates go all the way up to 1.8 million at peak. And then, the Utilization tab. So I'm going to show you the dashboard with real-time package statistics. This UI is showing real-time analytics on where the packages are, or the summary statistics across the country, across each region, and within a region, you can see the actual packages per state with different statuses. 
For example, here you can see the arrive count, departure count, etc. And you can see the global area showing it per region. Now, let's simulate movement. So this is a delay monitor. This is a listener waiting for any delayed objects. And here, on the top, I'm running the simulator, which makes the packages move along the route legs. And while this is running, you can see the statistics. So these are the delay events. As the simulator makes changes, we randomly make route legs delayed. The route leg monitor recalculates the delivery date of each package. And if the delayed route leg happens to be the last route leg for the package, the package becomes delayed, and it recalculates a revised delivery date. So here you can see how to query packages using the browser. This cluster has 192 million objects, but you can still run a query. The query is just like any other JDBC or SQL query. So it's picking up the first 5,000 packages, which is what you see here. And you can drill down into the actual objects and see the attributes of the objects. Like here, we went into the correct location, which is another object within the package. So if you look at the dashboard, the memory across the cluster is about 75%, and 600 giga was utilized. And back to the Packages tab. This UI is actually querying the space every second, and refreshing the statuses every second. So here, you can see the amount of time the query is taking to run, like you can see single-digit millis. I'm running the UI again. You'll be able to see the query time is under 10 millis, like here, it's 7 milliseconds. So here, the bottom window is the package delay monitor, and it's receiving the delay events. So if something happens that causes a package delay, and you need to send an email to the customer, that is something you can build like this. So I'm running a read client using 40 threads, reading an entire cluster, and randomly reading packages. So you can see it's doing up to 14K per second. This is a single client able to do 14,000 operations per second. Now, let's increase the number of threads. I'm bumping up the threads to 80. So if you run the same client with more threads, let's see how it performs. So the peak rate is going up to 25. Very shortly, you'll see it go even higher to 28K and more. So I'm running the simulator again, just to show the update performance. Again, the simulator just completes the route legs, which updates the packages. You can see that the blue bar goes all the way up to 150,000 per second. Here, you can see the number over the bar. In short, we have seen high performance with large volumes of data, including real-time processing of streaming data, as well as real-time queries, and elastic scaling to meet fluctuations in the load. Want to learn more? Contact us at gigaspaces.com or at gigaspaces on Twitter.